Well, I would say this is the beginning of the end for the Snyderverse. I think that's a pretty safe bet at this point because this one's a doozy. If Gal Gadot can fall, anyone can fall and will fall, I believe. And I actually think it's the right decision. I'm excited to hear your thoughts down below. It might finally be happening. Uh, and let's, let's dive into this. So for the past few weeks, ever since James Gunn and Peter Safran were announced as the new heads of the DCEU, or the DCU, DC Studios, uh, all the actors have been real nervous and with good reason. A number of you have been taking their social media posts at face value, not realizing that they've actually been campaigning for survival, as I have been telling you. Don't, you know, I hope if you learn anything from this, it's that, you know, actors and talent and managers will put stuff out there to try and get you to back them and to believe that it's happening so they can strong arm the studio into making it happen. And I think that's what you've been seeing. Uh, because of, and, and I think it's happened particularly with Warner Brothers because in the past, Warner Brothers and DC have been swayed by online chatter from fans. So much so that talent has taken to weaponizing fans in many cases against the studio. And Warner Brothers Discovery has still followed this path, even though it has not worked out well for them at all. Uh, but as we've been discussing, uh, and, and on top of all the, the bad negative energy and the toxicity, those same aggressive fans, they don't even show up to actually support these projects with ticket sales or clicks. It's like, it just, it, it, it never materializes. And it looks like James Gunn and Peter Safran, again, the new heads of DC Studios, are not going to say, stay stuck in this never-ending loop of complaints and failure. That's harsh, I gotta say, but I think it's an apt description of what's been going on. They're gonna break the cycle. And as I said, if Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman is going, everyone is likely going. We're talking everybody, everybody. Except maybe the Suicide Squad cast as Gunn selected them or worked with them himself, namely, Margot Robbie. I think it would be very difficult for him to let Margot Robbie go. Will Gunn have the discipline to truly start from scratch? We'll see, I hope that he does. With all due respect to Margot Robbie, but I think it's time for somebody else. Uh, I mean, she, nobody, she has a lot of fans online for her Harley Quinn, but again, they don't materialize. So let's go and get somebody else like Anya Taylor-Joy. Why do we only have, Lady Gaga is gonna take the role over, of course, for the Joker movie. But, uh, you know, wouldn't it be nice to be excited about some casting announcements in DC proper for a change? Although all these different universes are gonna go away. Also, that's something else James Gunn has promised, which I think is the right move. Now, The Hollywood Reporter broke this story reporting that Gunn and Safran, uh, well, we've heard that Gunn and Safran will be presenting their plan to David Zaslav soon, but The Hollywood Reporter specified that it could be as early as next week. They're gonna start sitting down, mapping it out, it's gonna be a process, and that Zaslav does need to approve it. So it's not, they're not gonna like say, do you like this or not? They're gonna start sitting down together and mapping it out. And it'll probably take the whole holiday season to do that. Uh, remember, because also it's the holidays. Although kudos to Gunn and Safran and Zazie for working through the holidays. That's how important DC is to Warner Brothers future or sales price <laughs> if Zazie decides to sell it. Uh, remember, I told you that one of the things they're considering is focusing on Viola Davis's Amanda Waller, the trial of Amanda Waller to start, uh, because Gunn has promised, as I just said, a unified front with a single DC universe across all the platforms, which I think is crucial. I agree, that is crucial. And so it would be great to have a kickoff storyline that made that clear. Uh, now, of course, Wonder Woman 1984 greatly shook the confidence of Warner Brothers and fans alike that Gal Gadot and Patty Jenkins had a handle on this character. Uh, remember how Patty, Je it's like Patty Jenkins is almost having the exact same experience as Dwayne Johnson. They were making comments of such bravado before their movies open, like, oh, we totally get our characters. We're in charge of all DC. And we all were like, those are some aggressive comments. You sure you wanna make them? And they were like, heck yeah. And as I've said, as I've been saying, so far, everyone who's ever joined the DC group has regretted it. And sometimes it's happened so fast, like with Dwayne Johnson, it's like giving him whiplash. We'll talk about Dwayne Johnson today because he's been having a day too. 
Uh, I think James Gunn does not want to join that group. And so I think that's one of the reasons he's being so aggressive. And good for him, because if he wasn't this aggressive, I think he would be joining this this, uh, support group of DC Regret. So he's going to, he has to do this. It's for his survival as well. Uh, So I think, so I think Gal Gadot and Patty Jenkins, they did it to themselves. The Hollywood Reporter says, though, in addition to the poor response to that film and the poor financial response to that film, their paydays were an issue. Warner Brothers was contractually obligated to pay Gal Gadot $20 million for Wonder Woman 3 and Patty Jenkins $12 million. And once again, it becomes clear that Warner Brothers Discovery ain't got no money. They can't even afford to release movies, much less pay people to make them. <laughs> but here's... Uh, that's so funny. Uh, uh, not so funny for everybody else. I wonder what's going on with Gunn and Saffron. Uh, they're like, I mean, I don't, I mean, I think sure, surely maybe they get some profit participation in the films. I mean, they're playing the long game as they should. Uh, also, Gunn, and, Gunn in particular, he didn't have any other plays, certainly not at this level. So I think he was right to roll the dice here, no matter how it turns out, because what else was he going to do? Um, but after Wonder Woman 1984 and a string of flops for Gal Gadot, I mean, look at her career right now. Uh, and Patty Jenkins getting kicked off of Star Wars? Kathleen Kennedy doesn't even want her. I mean, I don't think either is worth those paydays. Even if Warner Brothers Discovery had the money to give it to them, I'd be like, I'm not giving you that money. I mean, could Gal, could Gal Gadot be like, take less? Could she take less money to stick around? I wouldn't do it. I think this, I mean, because they could have said, we'll make Wonder Woman 3 if you take less money, but they turned him down flat today. Uh, Ooh, yikes. Uh, But again, it needs to be done. And I'm so glad that Gunn and Saffron are willing to do it. Clearly, Gal Gadot tweeted just the other day because she knew that the Wonder Woman 3 treatment had been handed in to Warner Brothers Discovery, and she wanted fan support. She wanted to point to the internet going, oh, we love you, Gal. We're so excited for Wonder Woman 3. But she got a big nothing burger in response to that tweet. Everybody was just like, what are you tweeting about? Are you sure? you're? I don't think you're coming back, Gal. (laughs) And I think that probably made this decision even easier. Uh, That's what I was thinking. I was like, it's like the same, you know, it's the same thing I was thinking about Dwayne Johnson's tweets today. I'm like, it's so bad. I'm just going to leave you alone. Uh, It's rough. Although now we'll talk about Dwayne Johnson because it can talk about it in this group of things. But I have a friend, by the way, who is a mega Wonder Woman fan. And he is the first call I made when this news broke. And I said, how do you feel about this? Are you devastated? Are you devastated? And he said, you know, I'm torn because I love Wonder Woman so much and I did like the first movie. And he said, but Wonder Woman 1984 was so bad, he did not care for it. I thought it had its moments, although I totally could see why from a business perspective it was not engineered for success. Uh, And I never imagined they would have had that guy go back into that body after Steve Trevor used it. It's based on a movie where the guy was dead. He wasn't coming back. Uh, So my friend just said, as long as Wonder Woman as a character sticks around, he'll be happy. And for sure, James Gunn is going to go get his own Wonder Woman. And I worry a little bit about what that'll be, what that'll look like. But, you know, he's done such a good job lately with Nebula. You know, well, the Russo brothers did a lot with Nebula. But James Gunn has ruined it. And I think his Mantis is wonderful. And Gamora looks pretty good in the upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Maybe he could do it. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt because I'm tired of the negativity around DC. Uh, I'd also wager that Jeff Johns is a co-writer on this treatment for Wonder Woman 3 along with Patty Jenkins, was a deal breaker. Patty Jenkins is nuts. I mean, it's like she didn't learn anything. You know, that's the definition of of insanity, that you keep doing the same thing and expect a different result. She's like, who should I write Wonder Woman 3 with? I know, Jeff Johns, who everybody's fighting with and says is toxic and a career killer. Let me go call him up. I mean, Gunn, who knows a lot of people, not just in Hollywood, but the comics industry, surely is aware of Johns' reputation at this point. It is a poorly kept secret. He not only got everybody in DC movies in trouble, but he completely obliterated the DC comic side. Diane Nelson, Dan DiDio, all these people, their careers are dead because of Jeff Johns. I mean, I think the gun's like, get the hell away from me. I think he wants him out of there before Jeff Johns can cause any damage to him and Saffron's reign. I think that is probably a part of it as well. 
So that's one of the reasons to have such an emphatic no. I think he's also going to want Dwayne Johnson out of there for the same reason. Because there can only be one cook, or two cooks, I guess, kind of, with Peter Safran in this kitchen. So speaking of desperate and embarrassing tweets, let's move over to Dwayne Johnson. This was so bad, who today tweeted out an article, or was that an advertisement from Deadline, claiming the Black Adam would actually turn a profit. Featuring some of the most creative math that Hollywood has ever seen. So creative that Hollywood had to call it out. Hollywood is infamous for creative math to hide profits. Just ask Scarlett Johansson. And even Hollywood was like, that's ridiculous. I can't believe you think anybody would buy that. Uh, in fact, if you noticed, there was also a little bit in that article about how Seven Bucks, not Warner Brothers, but Seven Bucks was developing a Hawkman solo movie as to show that there was, you know, a future for this brand. And that, that mysteriously disappeared from the article, perhaps because somebody got a call from a certain studio or, or executive or somebody. But I think that's very interesting and it makes the story even more embarrassing. I mean, wow. And also the reference of Captain America making only 370. I mean, that was at the very, it's first of all, I know there are some Captain America, the first Avenger fans, but like nobody thought that movie did particularly well. Uh, Kevin Feige got rid of Joe Johnston as the director. He was like, I gotta get rid of you and brought in the Russo brothers. So even Kevin Feige was like, there's problems here. And they totally did a, 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 an overhaul on the Captain America branding and the tone. I mean, if you look at the rest of the Captain America movies, they look nothing like the first Avenger. And I think for a reason. So, and also that was the very beginning of the MCU, not uh, so many movies in and when other movies have made so much money. I mean, it was, a, it was such a, uh, Dwayne Johnson is a producer and should know better than to make a comparison like that. I mean, that's just amazing. It was just incredible to see. Uh, also, recent screenings, by the way, speaking of removing things, recent screenings for The Flash have Henry Cavill's recently filmed cameo removed. He's back out. And Ben Affleck's similarly recently filmed cameo out of Aquaman 2. They're both been take, they've both been taken out. I do believe James Gunn is going to nuke the whole DCEU from orbit and build DC Studios from scratch or on top of the Suicide Squad and Peacemaker. I don't know how he could get away with that. It seems very sloppy to me. And again, like, it's going to grow back from that. But I mean, let's see. Uh, let's see. Now, to be clear, I believe that chatter, fan chatter and scoop chatter is very healthy for a franchise. It keeps the conversation going uh, and keeps people interested, but not the conspiracy theories that have long for too long weighed down the DCEU and created a toxic environment. I think everyone's just tired of it. Everybody. Gunn and Safran need to make it clear that they're doing their own thing and cut off the Snyderverse, which with all due respect, I do believe includes Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn. I don't know, how, again, it's the same, what I was just saying about the Suicide Squad and Peacemaker. I just don't know how you can keep any part of it without it being weird. And, and still allowing these conspiracy theories to fester. Let's just get all new talent in here. That's what I think we all wanna see. Uh, once the current slate is done, and if that is the case, by the way, Zazie might as well get a tax write-off for all these movies. He's really cash poor. He needs the tax write-offs because now, what's the point of these movies? And they're so far out. Aquaman 2 is a year away. Who's, well, who, why would anybody wanna watch that? Especially if they're not gonna continue with that. Uh, I mean, although Jason Momoa is saying that James Gunn's calling him up, maybe he's offering him Lobo because he's not going to be Aquaman anymore. Maybe he neglected to mention that second shoe dropping to, to Jason Momoa on the call. Uh, that would be interesting. That would be, uh, but I still think a Jason Momoa Lobo movie would make as little money as Black Adam, as I said in the live stream the other day. Uh, I also hope that the poor performance of Shazam and Black Adam shows that as much as James Gunn might like these quirky smaller characters, that's not the path forward for DC. Uh, certainly not out of the gate. I know he had a lot of success with Guardians of the Galaxy, but uh, I think that that was a unique situation and after they'd already built the original Trinity for, um, for Marvel. Uh, and the Avengers. So I, I just don't think that that's, I hope that they start out solid on solid footing with the core Justice League characters. I think that's really what they need to do. Uh, and these actors should stop campaigning because it's embarrassing. I mean, and speaking of embarrassment, 
Wonder Woman 1984, Black Adam. I think DC fans are tired of being embarrassed in the superhero space. And really, they want the nuclear option as well. I think even I've, even in the past few weeks, I've seen the most diehard Snyder fans be like, you know what, I think it's time to move on. So I think, I think and also I think James Gunn has the popularity with the same kind of fandom to get away with it. Which, which I think almost every executive would not be able to do. So maybe that was a good reason to hire him. Ah, I didn't think of that. Maybe Zazie's a little bit smarter than we think. All right, so there it is. That's the most recent development. Do you think it's the beginning of the end? And the beginning of the beginning. That's, let's, let's stick to positivity. Share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.